So it's been two months since Apple released their M1 iPad Pros that shocked the world with their performance and about a month since I released my ultra detailed review of the 12.9 inch model. So today I want to give you guys an update. Now that these have been out for two months, what has changed? What are our follow up findings as well as talk about were we wrong or was I just too harsh with iPad OS 15 and the 12.9 inch model? With that, I want to talk about why have I seen these as low as $150 off in two months after these things came out? And was Vadim just absolutely right about his thoughts on these high-end expensive devices? Let's get started with a 12.9 inch model. Obviously, you guys see it right here, but by the time this video is posted, this thing is probably going to be gone or at least up there for sale with somebody picking it up uh, because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I talked about iPad OS being limiting and spending so much money on this device, but with that, I went through all of those comments on that video, and there were a ton of them, and I really try to be open-minded with those of you guys that did not agree with my review, talking about that this is a supplementary device, even at over two grand to a MacBook Pro, and the way they're designed, you're supposed to have both, and that you wanna use them for, uh, you know, whatever they're best at, and that's exactly exactly what I've been doing. I wanted to give a chance because there's some things that I absolutely love about this thing. So I've been going through and using the Apple Pencil where it makes sense. I've been using photo editing software, some video editing software, and just seeing how it works and then flipping back and forth with my MacBook Pro. So with this thing, the M1 chip has been doing excellent with photo editing. I love having the Apple Pencil for that. I've been going through a bunch of photos, my birthday photos I edited, and that experience has been fantastic until you start exporting those. And in that case, I'm sorry guys, but a MacBook Air at way less is a way better option. I've had a bunch of crashes exporting those photos. They are a larger size, but it's an optimized program. And I ended up going back, as you guys could see, to iPad OS 14 on this system just to make sure everything's stable. And I still had those issues. Let me tell you, it is so frustrating when you're exporting, it gets halfway done three quarters and it crashes and all your work is gone. At that point, you don't even want to have an iPad. And the difference is the software. Even though I've been, I'll talk about a couple extra things that Apple has fixed with iPadOS 15, just the way that it's made, it's not like macOS. You don't have a photo saved every time it is finished rendering. So if it crashes, sure, you miss, you know, whatever hasn't been done. This thing, everything is saved at the end and it gets erased. And that point, all the benefits of the touchscreen are, are not really worth it. And really right now, I want a MacBook that has a touchscreen Apple. I think it is time. Now with that, I wanna talk about battery life that applies to both of these. In my usage and in the time this last month, it has been really noticeable that when you're pushing these machines, it definitely uses more power than before. With the M1 chip, even though it is efficient, when you're taking advantage of that extra performance, it, it does drain the battery and you're not getting better battery life than previous generations like you are with the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, when you're gaming, like we showed you guys in the comparison with the previous iPad Pro, and those games don't take full advantage yet of the extra graphics performance, you do actually gain some battery life. That is excellent. But with that, if you're pushing these, do expect these to have worse battery life when you're really pushing it about five hours, not the 10 that is quoted. Now, thankfully, we made one discovery that we actually posted at the end of one video as a bonus, uh, but not everybody makes it to the end. And I haven't seen anybody else talk about this online, but Apple actually changed the way these work. And now, if you are charging through the actual USB Type-C port on the device, Apple allows 33 watts or slightly higher than that to be accepted, even though they come with a 20 watt adapter. Now, that might be just because of the extra power draw that these things can have. And that's actually about similar to what we saw the M1 uh, Mac Mini use as far as the amount of power with the M1 chip. So Apple is accounting for that. But if you're plugging into the Magic Keyboard itself, that is limited to about 20 watts, and that can make a significant difference in speed 
or if you're actually using the device doing heavy tasks, if you're gonna be charging while using it, or just kind of, you know, keeping it at a similar level. So make sure you're plugging into the iPad itself. Now with that, onto iPadOS 15, Apple has listened, so this might be a benefit of doing a review, review that is pretty harsh, and they have changed the five gig app limit. So you're no longer limited to five gigs, and they up that, so an app can request for more RAM if it can use it, and these heavier programs definitely can use it. So that is a great thing. Thank you, Apple. But unfortunately, a lot of the other things that we talked about in that review have not been fixed. The external display support hasn't been fixed, and that just doesn't make sense to me, but I don't wanna waste a lot of time on that. The last thing I wanna say specifically for the 12.9 inch, the reason why it's still here, but it won't be, is the fact that many LED display, I mean, Apple nailed it out of the park. A lot of people have been hesitant, talking about blooming, talking about other issues, but guys, let me tell you, this is the best display that I have ever put my eyes on other than that 6K display. And of course that thing is not portable. Sure, you see blooming sometimes, but man, outside in the sun and watching movies outdoors in bright lights and at night especially is amazing. And it makes me want to keep this just for that reason. The HDR is fantastic. The speakers are great. I'm going to be doing more camping and gosh, I want to keep this. You download the movies on there. It looks great, but I just don't think it could be justifiable. Do you really need a screen that's two grand with the package uh, just for watching movies? I don't know. I don't think that is worth it. But that just really makes me wish that when I'm switching over to this one and using this, and I think this is a real start of the show uh, overall for the price point, you get a killer machine. I wish this had that mini LED display. And this just makes me wanna, for those people that are, haven't bought one yet, it just makes it more worthwhile to wait. It might be a little bit, but to get one with a mini LED display display because the updates are awesome and whenever I use this at night or when it's darker I wish it was that model but now switching over to this device man this is the ultimate iPad just like what he mentioned and one very interesting thing that he said I think not in his review outside of it is he said that people buy the iPad Pro not to get an ultimate computing device it could be a laptop replacement and even though that's not what an iPad should be in my opinion if you're spending over two grand you kind of expect the software to not limit you like crazy, but they just buy it because they want the best of the best. They want something that is future-proof, and this is exactly what this iPad has been. Um, even with iPad OS 15, with the updates, the note-taking features, it just makes me want to use this way more often because it's very capable, very nice to use now. The iPad OS 15 updates with multitasking, everything else, as far as iPad OS as a tablet device, it is awesome. Um, for regular tasks, the battery life is great. That M1 chip can sip power if you don't need a lot of it. And there's really not much to complain about other than that display. And with the fact that I've seen this as low as $700, I mean, nothing can touch it. Nothing can touch it even for a couple years. So if you score a deal, what, what else can compete with that? <laughs> Pretty much nothing. Now, why has why have these dropped so much? But I've seen them as low as 150 off for the larger model, 100 off for the this one. And it's just because of the M1 chip. Not only did that give Apple the ability to give this a lot more power, but also cost savings. And just like the M1 MacBook Air dropping $100 lower, and I think even once 150 lower, these things, same thing. Apple can stuff them with a lot more power, and because they're making M1 chips in so many of their devices, it just means that they're saving money, and at some points, the retailers can also drop that savings down to you, and it makes it even harder for other companies to compete. So overall, that has been my update. We still highly recommend this one. The 12.9 inch model, if you're getting the cheap one and you want that display, you can actually make use of it. It is a great device. But uh, for an overall computing device, do I think I was a little bit too harsh? Honestly, guys, after trying to apply what you guys were saying and using it the way you guys suggested, I still am having a very hard time uh, making sense, unless money doesn't matter for you. Sure, in that case, buy all the Apple devices and use them, but overall, oh, other than the display, I don't think it really is worth it compared to older options for much less money buying a refurbished or you new one if you need that larger size. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Max. Click that circle above if you guys want to subscribe and help us reach our goal of a million subscribers before the end of the year. Check out one of those ultra detailed reviews right over there. This is Max, and I'll see you in the next one.